गुड मॉर्निंग फ्रेंड्स सो इन द लेक्चर सीरीज रिलेटेड विद इंग्लिश लिटरेचर स्पेशली द फिस्ट ऑफ द इंग्लिश लिटरेचर ये इज द नेक्स्ट लेक्चर व्हिच इज अपॉन द एज ऑफ मिल्टन वी विल डिस्कस अपॉन इट यस सो द ड्यूरेशन ऑफ द एज ऑफ मिल्टन इज 1632 1660 एंड इट इज अल्सो कॉल्ड एन एरा ऑफ पोलिटिकल अनरेस्ट एंड इनस्टेबिलिटी and in the age of milton we find there are three sub ages first uh, the jacobin age which timeline is between 1603 to 1700 uh, second one is the caroline age in which age there was the uh, there was a reign of charles first and that's why it is also called the age of charles first its timeline is uh, uh, between uh, 1625 to 1649 after that there is uh, the next period the next is the interim period of commonwealth which duration is 1649 to 1600 so talking about this historical background there are some uh, uh, events happen in this era uh, first one is civil war happen after that there was the execution of charles first uh, uh, happen in 1649 after that there was uh, established the commonwealth After that uh, there was the rise and disappearance of Cromwell between 1653 to 1658, and we find uh, 1660 there was uh, the restoration of uh, monarchy, especially. So talking about the first greatest writer whose name is John Milton, and uh, really uh, is he is uh, so much appreciative writer. Whom about we must discuss his timeline is sixteen zero eight to sixteen seventy four, and uh, he is called the Lady of Christ is special, and there was one greatest poet is third poet uh, in the English literature whose name is Lord Tennyson who uh, who, who speaks about the uh, Milton that Milton was the God gifted organ voice of England, and he was the mighty mouth the inventor of harmonies. so these are the greatest lines related with uh, milton john milton and uh, milton's test was as severe is worse as polish his method and language as strict as those of the school of dryden pope that grew up when he was old literary past and present just made in him not did he fail like all the greatest men to make a cast into the future so stop for a book who studied about milton and he stated about him and really uh, talking about milton that he, uh, he is considered the last uh, pick of the elizabethan age especially because he summed up in himself the learned and artistic influences of the english renaissance and handed them on us talking about poetry he says uh, milton says That poetry is the art of uniting pleasure with truth by calling imagination to the help of reason. So he especially he always gives his importance to the reason, and uh, he really we must uh, we must focus upon it. After that, we find that uh, there is Wordsworth. Wordsworth says about Milton that. Uh, Uh, he addresses to the Milton that thy soul was like a star and dwelt apart. Really, it was uh, so much uh, nicer. Chapter about Milton. In uh, one of the poem, first first says about Milton that Milton thou should be living at this hour. Really, that's. Milton was the greatest person. in the history of english literature and especially his uh, he wrote his first english verse uh, which, which title is on the death of a fair in fact after that uh, which was written in uh, uh, 1628 and the poem was written on the death of his niece whose name was anne phillips uh, after that we find uh, some traits about the poetical career related with john milton we must talk about it there four poets are there 
first one is cambridge period the second one is the horton period cambridge period is so called college period second one is the horton period third one is the period of political and religious controversies which period he wrote is mostly prose period of greeks so titled the latter poetic period so at the beginning uh, we will discuss the college period of the john milton in which uh, era wrote poems in latin and english language uh, there was one of the poem ode on the morning of christ nativity which appeared in 1629 in this poem he celebrated the birth of jesus christ he wrote especially on the occasion uh, he wrote it especially christmas 1629 after that he wrote the greatest uh, literary work which title is on shakespeare which came in 1630 that there was a, a, a passion fragmentary but he wrote at easter in uh, 1630 so there was uh, his another poem on arriving at the age of 23 it appeared in uh, 16 it was his college period in this college period, he wrote uh, he works there was his next period whose title is, which title is the nord horton period so in this period we find uh, that uh, he wrote uh, about four minor poems composed four minor poems in this era first one is the El allegro which came uh, here by in 1632 wrote in uh, it wrote uh, really, um, the title is in italian italian Yeah, find the cheerful man is there in this poem. And the poem uh, the composed in octo syllabics with the uh, ten line prelude. And in this poem, uh, we find an invocation to the goddess Mirth to allow the poet to live with her. First, amid the delights of pastoral scenes, then amid those of uh, tower cities and the busy Hum of men. There was another poem, uh, El Pensiero. So it is so Italian title. Yes, which appeared in 1632. It is in this poem the pensive or thoughtful man. The meaning of the pensive or thoughtful man or contemplative. Man. The poem composed in rhymed octosyllabics. Poem is an invocation to the goddess of melancholy. Invocation to goddess of melancholy. reading her bring peace white laser and contemplation and this poem describes the pleasures of studious meditative life of tragedy epic poetry and music especially this poem had a considerable influence on the meditative graveyard poems of the 18th century and there are echoes in pope's eloisa to abelard and later gothic works and there were some companion poems yes yes so especially there were some companion poems which poems il penseroso and el allegro there was another poem that title is a uh, camus uh, which appeared in 1634 actually uh, it is a, it is a, uh, it is mask of pastoral drama performed at ludlow castle and it performed before the earl of bridgewater uh, in blank verse especially it was written at the suggestion of milton's friend whose name was laws l a w e s and the uh, making the literary work camus yes and especially its purpose was to celebrate the earl of bridgewater's entry on the presidency of wells and the marches there was an is another famous poem which title is lysidas which appeared in 1637 it is an elegy wrote on the uh, edward king yes, who was drawn on a voyage to ireland 
crossing from Chester Bay to Dublin. Especially hmm. was written in Elegy. You can say that the, it in the form of the poem was to with the help of the conventions we find the use suggestion of classic conventions it's considered the one of the best images in the english language and that's why it is also called a work of great originality so here we find uh, there is, is another period that is the period of political and religious controversies in this era he wrote he wrote a uh, prose especially it is uh, known as days of prose for milton is not others only for milton age of prose for milton in this era he composed uh, 25th fifth pamphlets he composed or wrote uh, out of 25th pamphlets uh, 21 were written in English and four wrote in Latin language. That's one of the those which title is of education. Yes, it is a poor tract and it addressed to his friend Hartlieb, H R T L I B. There was another his prose which title is on divorce. And uh, it, uh, these were the two pamphlets, 1643 and four. There was another uh, one in the work is Aeropagetica, which appeared in 1644, and it is one of the best uh, little work written by uh, John Milton. Its full title is uh, Aeropagetica, uh, a speech of Mr. John Milton for the liberty uh, of the unlicensed printing to the Parliament of England. So, this, this is the grand title, and Imitates the Areopagiticus of the Athenian orator Isocrates, which was addressed to the council that met on the Areopagus in Athens. Especially talking about this prose, it is the greatest prose among all proses. Yes. Prose we find the speech for liberty for of licensing printing is wrote in the form of speech just in both houses of uh, British Parliament especially was directed against the order of Parliament which established a censorship of books there was his another prose work that is a history of Britain yes, which was partly completed by John Milton uh, there was uh, some sonnets uh, composed in this era also uh, such as on his blindness one of the best sonnets in, in, in for that there was uh, on the late uh, massacre in Petmont. it is so grand sonnet grand composed uh, by john milton after that there was a uh, took uh, syriac skinner to the nightingale which is the most romantic literary work by milton after that on his deceased wife Cromwell. There was his next period was the period of the great great epics. In this era, he composed great poems. First one was Paradise Lost, and we will talk about it. Paradise Lost, and so one of the grand poet and one of the greatest work, not only in the era of Milton but also history of English literature was uh, generally uh, again as early as in, uh, in 1658 and issued in 16 was first divided into 10 books uh, but in certain second edition first edition was re-divided into 12 books this was in the form it follows the strict unity of the classical especially the major theme the uh, highlight or theme of the poem and work is the fall of man 
the objective the aim the purpose of the milton towards the completing or towards the composing this grand work is to justify the ways of god to men we find action moves from heaven to hell and hell one in a uh, work really when read it very few spiritual what we can say was composed in blank verse especially at the beginning we will talk about the book first and in the book first of paradise loss here uh, the poet invokes uh, to the heavenly muse the book first so here so present the theme of the poem that is all of the man disobedience was in this poem the poet want to uh, the poet want to clear uh, the theme the purpose or the aim of the poem the writer the, to justify the ways of god to men this poem uh, and the book first of the poem presents the defeated archangel there whose name is saturn with belzebub and his rebellious angels and here in this uh, first poem so in sorry in the first book of the paradise lost we find that the saturn summons calls a council of angels and in which play at which place the saturn is uh, taking the council uh, that uh, place is called pandemonium which is the pandemonium that uh, p a n d e m o n i u m uh, which is called the palace of saturn talking about second book uh, here in the second book uh, the council of the saturn is going on in this council there is the debate whether another battle for the recovery of heaven we has our date because the saturn one is uh, you can say that he is trying to do something bad activities to uh, to the god and in second uh, book of the paradise lost we find one of the chief fallen angels of saturn whose name is a moloch yes and he recommends that we should fight uh, against the god in from war uh, there are uh, another uh, angels of uh, saturn whose name uh, are belial and mammon and both uh, recommend peace in order to avoid worse torments there was is one of the um, tant uh, angel name is belzebub he announces the creation of another world also he uh, does not want to go towards the god so feeds to saturn that we should make another world but here uh, saturn undertakes a visit and passes through hell gates uh, and he is guarded by the sin and death and he passes a part through the realm of chaos another book that one is a uh, third and in this book third mental invokes celestial light to illumine the ever during dark of his own blindness and in this book he describes a uh, god who sees saturn's flight towards the world who tells in this book that for portals the success and the fall and punishment of man assizing that man will fall not through predestination but through free will here we find son of god offers him uh, as a ransom accepted and exalted as the savior Say we are, oh you are. Here we find the find uh, uh, they are leading up to heaven. He uses himself as stripping cherub, directed to earth by Uriel, where he lands on Mount Nephites in Armenia. So here one in God of Paradise Lost. The uh, next one book is uh, book fourth of Paradise Lost. in which uh, saturn starts to journey towards the garden of eden where we find the first man and man uh, created by the god whose name were adam and eve and they are naked majesty actually created by the god they don't have any emotions or feelings external or internal feelings 
and here we find that there is one tree this is called the tree of knowledge both adam and you uh, have forbidden have been forbidden by the god not to discuss not to go towards the tree of knowledge saturn want to tempt both adam and you to disobey this prohibition which is uh, given by the god or the almighty you find this was discovered by the guardian angels Ithu ethereal and japan find the scratch like a root toad near the ear of you here when the starting comes uh, toad you especially expelled from the garden by the well, the next one book the book fifth is there in the book fifth we find the you tells to adam the disturbing dream of temptation uh, happen with her and adam comforts her and they sit about uh, their daily tasks doing that garden person who comes uh, whose name is rafael also one of the angel of god sent by the god rafael comes to paradise and uh, rafael, uh, rafael makes warning to adam and you told us that they should they should paint all evidences given by the god both when adam also what they paint all evidences given by the god the rafael says this how saturn who is the bad angel of the god how he become bad angel so he has here yeah. there in the book 6 we find there is us rafael continues uh, talking about uh, saturn before the before adam and eve he tells uh, that uh, how michael and gabriel were sent to fight against saturn and uh, son of god alone attacked the host of saturn after driving them to the verge of heaven forced them to leap down through chaos into the deep and uh, there is a book uh, seventh is there in which uh, milton evokes irenia u r e n i a who is the muse of astronomy actually then requests her to aid him then continues rafael to hear here rafael continues talking with uh, adam and you that uh, god's decision to send his son to create another world from the vast abyss e b y w s he describes the six days of creation ending with the creation of man the last creation by the god is a man man you especially we can new warning to adam that death will be the penalty for eating of the fruit of the tree of knowledge that's why you should not go toward that tree of knowledge and don't uh, play with it was a book of the paradise lost book 8 in which adam narrates what he remembers since his own creation his own need for for rational fellowship his plea to his maker for companion the creation of love adam and rafael talk of the relations between the sexes final warning rafael used to adam and you then rafael departs from it here in still from first book to still book 8 we find that uh, uh, then is the created awareness to adam and you not not be disobeyed so should adam and you must taint all the rules and regulations made by the god but the book 9th of paradise lost is amazing here we find that yes here we find that that there is insisted that you know, the poet uh, john milton insists that his argument is not less but more heroic than the themes of homer and virgil the poet describes saturn's entry into the body of serpent he has uh, he has came the form of serpent and he when he finds you despite alam's warning on pursuing her lovers alone 
pursuits and certain pursuits uh, the you to eat of the tree of knowledge and you tell us to adam what has passed and brings him of the fruit and he this disobedience happened certain uh certain forced to do these activities he eats that fruit after that after that after that uh adam it it and Adam recognizing that she's doomed, resolves to perish with her also eats of the fruit. Find here. They both lost innocence. They feel shamefulness after eating that tree of knowledge. It's, it's an apple. Find that they discover their nakedness and fall to meet accusation. And here obtain a paradox lost comes before us that the God sends his son to judge the transgressor and they greet him with guilt and shame and confess and he pronounces his sentence so sin and death is all to come to this world and they make a broad highway but either from hell and after doing this bad activity Satan returns to hell and announces uh, before his angels that they are, they have made their victory whatever uh, god has planned doing good things all plan are made unplanned they are certain so much happy how certain explains before his angels how he has become a uh, transformation in a uh, serpent now how he made disobedience to you uh, really uh, there is uh, ele uh, book, n book number 11th is there and god 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 saw god saw this activity god is uh, god was observing see yes he was but uh, So in this book we find that uh, Adam and Eve came before the God, and here Eve laments such. Adam also had to plead God. Sorry, God, why was so much mistake, harsh mistake done by them? No, no, no. God says no, mistake. So what your rules did not the mistake so in the big tale we find the michael tells the subsequent history of the old testament after that he described the coming of the messiah its incarnation faith resurrection and ascension michael foretells the corrupt state of the church until the second coming and with these revelations he has been comforted by dream presaging great good assured that they may possess the paradise within they are laid out of the garden. So wait, that is lost, which, which is which is divided into the book twelve, twelve books divided. By John Milton Paradise again, which came before us sixteen seventy one. This uh, it is an epic poem also. Two books, especially dominated by Puritanism, especially. The find we find in this paradise again Christ temptation and victory too. Here complementary it is a complementary to paradise lost and we can say that it's the sequel to paradise lost. Also. It is composed paradise again was composed by John Milton at the suggestion of Thomas Edward. Here the book first of paradise again we find. Uh, the baptism of Jesus by John and proclamation, proclamation from heaven that he is the son of God with a certain alarm someone's a council again in this uh, book and undertakes his temptation he just is laid into the wilderness there are the book first so it is in four books is special so there was a great poem he has uh, composed Samson Agnistis, yes, it was composed in 1671. It is a tragedy, and the main force of the poem is the story of Samson, as found in the book of Judges, contained in the Old Testament of the Bible. Poem Samson Agnistis, 
adopted by the model of Greek tragedy, the closed drama, Samsel Agnes is closed drama, and it is compared to Prometheus Bound, written by Achilles or Oedipus at Colonus, uh, written by Sobo Sobocles. And the poem, uh, the literary work Samson Agnes uh, composed in blank verse. The, the word Agnes Agnes meaning means the wrestler or champion. And this literary work deals with the last phase of the life of the Samson when he is a prisoner of the Philistines and blind. This poem is compared to the assumed circumstances of the blind poet himself. After the collapse of the Commonwealth and his political hopes, mm -hmm. uh, in this poem we find the calm of mind or passions paint. We can say that this entire piece confirms to the neoclassical doctrine of unities. Today we find the uh, work, uh, all entire works or all entire periods, sub periods of age of Milton. So there were also another writers, another movements in we will talk about it. And so there was one of the school, poetical school, that's title is the Metaphysical Schools of Poet. And the world, the term metaphysical uh, applied to poetry. John Dunn. The term metaphysical firstly used by Dr. Johnson. Is borrowed it from Dryden's phrase about Donner, especially the term metaphysical uh, is the term of contempt signifying habitual deviation from naturalness of thought and style to novelty and quaintness. The metaphysical style was established by John Donn uh, nearby in the 20th century, and the major characteristic of metaphysical poetry. Uh, metaphysical schools are uh, met philosophical argument, extravagant and far fetched imagery, terseness of expressions, profusion of conceit, and harsh myths. All these uh, characteristics made uh, their poetry obscure, especially most of the Jacobian and Caroline poets such as uh, Herbert, Crashaw, Wagon, Harry, Carew, Marvin, Cowley, uh, these are the metaphysical. These metaphysical poets have greatly influenced uh, the poetry of 20th century especially and the label was first used by Dr. Johnson in his life of Cowley. And the metaphysical poets firstly used by Dr. Johnson in, in, in his work type of Kali so then we find that there are key documents uh, wrote upon sorry wrote on the metaphysical poets uh, such as J. C. Grierson's metaphysical lyrics and poems of the 17th century which appeared in 1921 and T. S. Eliot's essay uh, on metaphysical poets that itself is metaphysical poet in which uh, Eliot has uh, created the new term that is the new term which is dissociation of sense the first meta where we will talk about him the, the metaphysical poet name is george herbert so here i want to take a short break so we'll discuss about it so continue we are going to so george herbert yes he wrote oh, his lifetime is a 1593 to 1633 he composed poems published these poems published posthumously. Posthumously is after death. And uh, uh, Walton was written biography on John Herbert. After that, there were uh, Herbert's friends were there, uh, whose name were uh, Bacon and John Don. Yes, Francis Bacon and John Don. And uh, we find that uh, Coldridge biography and literary in enhance Herbert's reputation. So there was a, his a famous poem, The Temple, composed by George Herbert, which appeared in 1633. It contains this poem, the poem, The Temple, contains all his surviving English poems. And the, uh, the temple shows his enthusiasm for the Church of England and concern with practical theology. There was another uh, poem written by George Herbert that was The Collar. 
yes it is one of the famous poem composed by george herbert after that there were some poems such as affliction was there after that easter wings man there was another uh, another literary work by george herbert that was a outlandish proverbs which appeared in 1640 and in this uh, and a collection of foreign proverbs in translation there was a next uh, metaphysical poem name was uh, jot crash his life time was uh, 1630 to 1649 his first work was tips to the temple and it is one of the best work by jot crash actually this tips to the temple is a collection of religious poems was influenced by marino and the spanish mystic sect so much of it was reprinted with valuable additions in carmen dio nostro so there were other literary works by richard crashaw uh, the infant martyrs a letter to the countess of denbig we find there are best known poems in complete put uh, this to the saint theresa Here was one of the his best work was him in which there was one of the best line love thou art absolute soul uh, lord of life faith the work the flaming heart he composed after the weeper was the poem composed by richard crash uh, the weeper was addressed to mary magdalen he was another poem sorry another poet henry wagan yes the best poet in tropical school Uh, his lifetime was 1622 to 1695 composed his literary work yes uh, upon the priory grove yes in which his wooing of catherine is apparently recalled in the poem there was uh, another one the poems with the 10th satire of juvenile english to six it was the first collection after that there was a olor iscanus which appeared in 1651 the swan of usk so these are the poems in the first two volumes are secular including fashionable love verses and translations from ovid ausonius boethius and the polish jesuit latin poet asimid serve vaski there was another uh, literary work silex kintel uh, skintilans it was a flashic flint actually it was a second edition of silent skintilans in uh, which appeared in 1655 Uh, it is a profound spiritual experience and uh, it is connected with the death of his brother uh, william in 1648 there was another literary work the mount of olives or solitary devotions flowed solitudinis and flow solitudinis consist of three pious prose translations in the life of saint polynus of nola uh, there was a translation of the hermetical physic by henry nonis and there was a the chemistry key it was one of the translation there was a thalia redivia regeneration the retreat this is one of the literary works and talking about the wagon society wagon society was the one of the yes it was uh, this society was founded in 1995 society journal journal is there which title is kintilia the journal is edited by anne clusenar and sena there is a poetry collection notes is stat one double helix time clips to uh, meditations on the lives and work of henry and thomas wagon twin brother of henry wagon so there is a next poet of metaphysical school thomas key which no whose lifetime was 1594 to 1639 first little work poems this piece uh, in which uh, there are pieces uh, which are influenced by dun john dun and ben john uh, john dun and johnson and after yes dr johnson there is a, another one the work coelum britannicum it was actually mask there was another one a rapture to saxum to pen uh, thrust these were the little works after that there was another great, one of the greatest poet whose name is abraham cowley whose lifetime is 1680 to 1667 uh, actually abraham cowley is the classical scholar he supported the king in the civil war and on his death charles ii bestowed on him the epitaph that mr cowley 
had not left a better man behind him in England. And when Kali was staying, uh, he wrote a long epical romance that is called Pyramus and Thisbe, which appeared in 1628. After that, there was a poem Constantia and Philetus, which appeared in 1630. It was so much longer poem by uh, Abraham Kali. After that, there was the Davidis. It was one of the best poems by Kali. It is an epic on the biblical history of David. After that, there was a poem. Uh, uh, there was a, actually a collection, we can say that, The Mistress by Abraham Colley. It was the collection of love poems, especially. Uh, there was a li another literary work, Pindaric Oats, uh, in which we find a curious hybrid between the early freedom of the Elizabethans and the classicism of the latter generation. And in Pindaric Oats, we find uh, the, the writer introduces the irregular ode imitated by John Dryden. There was another literary work, essays were there. Yes, it actually it was the prose work, and uh, in which of myself is one of the base prose works. It contains interesting particular uh, particulars related with his early life, and uh, uh, this pub firstly published in the works. But, uh, there were another works uh, discourse by way of vision concerning the government of Oliver Cromwell. So the civil war uh, yes he wrote uh, actually the civil war uh, was a political epic after that, there were another prose work a proposition for the advancement of learning the visions and prophecies uh, concerning england yes there were uh, there was also play uh, by abraham Colley. that title was the guardian it was written to entertain the prince of wales came on his visit to cambridge in 1642 and it was later revised as Cutter of Coleman Street, which appeared in 1663. All his life was written by his friend and literary executor Spratt and his prefix to the works. There was one of the greatest poets whose name was Andrew Marvell, whose lifetime was 1621 to 1678. He was the tutor, the daughter of Lord Fairfax. He assisted Milton in his duties as secretary for foreign tongues. He was the member of parliament for Hull. Marvel began his career an unofficial laureate to Cromwell. Marvel appointed in 1657 Latin secretary to the Council of State, a post previously occupied by his friend and sponsor John Milton. There were his uh, famous uh, works such as Upon Appleton House, The Garden, The Moor Poems, The First Anniversary, uh, Upon the Death of His Late Highness, The Lord Protector. After that, there was a last instructions to a painter. Last instruction to a painter was a final satire um, written by uh, Andrew Marvel. Actually, last instructions to a painter attacks financial and sexual corruption, court and in parliament. There was another work, the rehearsal transports, part second. Yes, yes. part second appeared in sixty. The rehearsal transpose uh, transpose uh, was a work full of humor and charm. It was a controversial mock biblical prose work. It advocates toleration for dissenters. Here ahead there was a new letters which there are poems not published until 1681 and uh, Marvel uh, Andrew Marvel yes Andrew Marvel's uh, rhymes are flexible his melody delicate love nature freshness of gardeners we find that there was work upon the hill which theme was nature after that there was a gallery. Twist Call Mistake is one of the famous poems written by Andrew Marvel. It, uh, there we find metaphysical blend of passion and fantastic conceit in the poem Twist Call Mistress. Uh, and its uh, the major theme is the love. There was another literary work by Andrew Marvel. The title was The Nymph Complaining for the Death of Her Fawn. Cromwell returned from Ireland. Uh, find the theme of patriotism. In the Cromwell return from Al. Second edition of Paradise Lost contain a commendatory poem by Marvel. So most important find. Age of Milton, we one of the 
another school of poetry that one is the the cavalier poets yes talking about them uh, the poets of the reign of charles I were called caroline poets some of them were secular some called and the most important among them robert and the other Carolan poets uh, who deserve mention uh, such as uh, Thomas Carew, Sir John Sucklin, uh, Richard Lovelace and Andrew Marvell. Among them Richard Lovelace, Sir John Suckling, Robert Herrick, Dom Thomas Carew and Abraham Cowley were called Cavalier poets. Keep in mind Richard Lovelace, yes, Sir John Suckling, Robert Herrick, Thomas Carew, Abraham Cowley are called Cavalier poets. And these Cavalier poets were persecuted during the Puritan ascendancy and Robert Herrick uh, was suspended from church service. Suckling had to take shelter abroad, Cowley was once arrested and Lovelace was put in prison uh, especially poets were influenced by Johnson. First one Robert Herrick whose lifetime was 1591 to 1674. He wrote two volumes of poems he is one of the finest English lyric poems for Harry. So one of the work is Noble Numbers. There was another work he was Hesperides. Yes, both are actually collections of shorter poems. Yes, both are sacred and profane. And both the uh, collection of shorter poems strongly influenced by uh, Dr. Johnson and the classics. It was uh, Tua and Thea, Tu Julia. Jerry Reap, these were the yes. Robert Herrick. There was another book, Richard Lovelace was there. Uh, when the Civil War uh, broke out, he was influenced by Roundheads, Yucasta, Epos, Old Sonnets, Songs, you see, these were the water just Thea from prison to Lucasta going to the wars. Uh, both are the best known lyrics, uh, both uh, composed in simple and sincere manner, both uh, wrote uh, free from the cynicism of his day. They are uh, talking about the Lucasta po posthume poems in which his brother published his remaining verses after his death. There was another poet, Sir John Sucklin. He was actually favorite of Cla uh, Charles I, uh, one of the most elegant and brilliant uh, of the Cavalier poets among all Cavalier poets. Stephen and say the greatest gallant and gamester of his day, Aubrey. So in, he invented the game of cribbage. So there were his uh, his uh, works such as Ballad upon Wedding, Why So Pale and Van, Fond Lover. There was another poem, Fragmenta Aurea, yes, in which uh, consists the poems, plays, letters, and tracts. Among them, the famous Ballad upon Wedding was one of the famous uh, letter work by Sir John Suckling. Sessions of the poets, yes, uh, it was an expression of contemporary opinion on Johnson, Carew, and D. Avenant. Uh, there was a Aglora, yes, it was actually play uh, with two fifth, uh, fifth acts, one tragic, the other not. It was printed in 1631. There was another work, The Goblins, it was actually a romantic drama, yes, in which Reginella, Reginella, an open imitation of Shakespeare's Miranda. And there were spirits are uh, copied from Ariel. There was another work by Sir John Suckling, Breno Ralph. It was an expansion of the discontented colonel. It was a tragedy. And these plays are cheaply valuable for their lyrics. Uh, they are talking about the age of Milton. Uh, we must talk about the drama. Firstly, we can talk about Philip Massinger. He collaborated with Fletcher after the withdrawal of Beaumont and especially Philip Massinger composed or wrote uh, comedies. Yes, first one is A New Way to Pay Old Debts. It is the best known among all his works and this play deals with the discomfiture of Sir Giles Overditch who is a character based, on, based in part on the notorious extortioner Sir Giles uh, Mom, Mom Pesson. There was another book, The City Madam, The Guardian. The Guardian is a romantic comedy. After that, there is a, the picture. It is also romantic comedy as well as feminist play. Another work is The Duke of Milane. It is a tragedy. 
it is one of the earliest independent plays and a popular one and the duke of milani based on the story of herod and mariamne as told by josephus after that there was another work the roman actor it is actually his favorite play is a tragedy and it is acted in 1626 printed in 1629 and the roman actor is based on the life of emperor domitian as told by suetonius and dio cassius there was another work believe as you list the tragedy it is the original play which was banned because it dealt with the recent spanish and portuguese history is a powerful story of a returned nationalist leader failing to get support and being hounded by the imperial authorities there was another work the maid of honor it is a romantic drama it is based on a story by boccaccio camilla is messenger's best female character the play contains some of his finest scenes there was another work the bond man it is a tragic comedy one of the best messengers tragic comedies there was another work the renegado the great duke of florence the unnatural combat the unnatural combat has a uh, best qualities the french and vitality of his blank verse clarity and strength of his plot construction his fine theater sense especially there was another work the custom of the country it, it is a tragic comedy Uh, it is uh, written by the two writers teacher and messenger it is derived from the persilus by sigismunda of cervantes uh, it is famed for its obscenity it was described by john dryden as containing more boundary than any illustration play uh ap says about this uh, of all plays that ever i did see the worst having neither plot language nor anything in the earth that is acceptable and this play is an adaptation by nicholas wright with the action set in southern africa was performed in 1980 custom of the country the witty and satiric novel by e horton actually uh, sir john uh, van olden barnet is a historical tragedy it deals with contemporary events in holland it is an edition by t h howard hill was published by the malon society in 1980 there was another work the double marriage and it is uh, uh, this is written by fletcher and messenger there is another work the beggar's bush it is also by fletcher and messenger holdich in his table talk declared that i could read the beggar's bush from morning to night how sylvan and sunshiny it is there was another work a very women by fletcher and messenger there was another work the bloody brother or rollo duke of normandy which was a uh, created by fletcher johnson chapman and messenger it is an edition by j d jump was published in 1948 reissued in 1969 Uh, this contains the lyric take or take those lips away which occurs with certain changes in miser for miser there was another work uh, the virgin mater which was collaborated with decker the tragedy religious play the same story has been treated in poems by ac sinburn jim hopkins too there is another work the fatal dory it was a tragedy uh, messenger and nathan field and here rose the fair penitent is founded on this play also the next uh, the name is john ford william heming says in his book elegy on radoff's finger tragedies that deep in a dump jack ford alone was got with folded arms and melancholy hat he especially wrote tragedies which were unequal in quality the broken heart tragedy this pity she is a whore is a tragedy this pity she is a whore actually is a play uh, which deals with the guilty passion of giovanni and his sister annabella for each other it is an obsessive passionate play it focuses on the sensationalist incest taboo uh, it is a force john ford's most famous play there was another work perkin warbeck it is a historical tragedy it is the best historical drama outside shakespeare 
because this play has source which are an episode in Bacon's Henry VII after that the witch of Edmonton it is written in collaboration with Decker and Raleigh in 1621 it firstly published in 1658 and it is partly based on the story of Elizabethan Sawyer who was hanged as a witch after that there was another work The Lover's Melancholy it is a romantic comedy it is influenced by Burton's Anatomy of Melancholy there was another work Love's Sacrifice it is a tragedy its main theme is the folly of love other works the fancy chaste and noble the lady trial and uh, ahead we find the prose in the age of milton we will discover about it so uh, there is the first prose writer is a sir thomas brownie yes who wrote five books in small size great and uniform First one is the Religio Medici, which was written in 1635 and published in 1642. Uh, it was a mixture of religious faith and scientific skepticism. It is divided into two parts relating broadly to God and to man. The first traits, the first part traits of matters of faith, the hostilities among rival sects and religious religions and man as microcosm. Its breadth of vision and tolerance are matched in the second part. Whether there is one, Pseudoxia Epidemica. Its subtitle is Inquiries into Very Many Received Tenets and Commonly Presumed Truths. Whether vulgar errors. Uh, vulgar errors resembles the work of Burton, the so longest work. So that Hydrotaphia Urnvriel. It is a masterpiece. Yes, it is a masterpiece created by Sir Thomas. Browning, it, it, it has the reflections in which we find reflections on human mortality induced by the discovery of some ancient funeral urns and this is the companion piece to the garden of Cyrus. It is the first archaeological treatise in English, the garden of Cyrus, companion to Hydrotapia. It is a treatise on Quincunx, Q-U-I-N-C-U-N-X. There was another work, uh, Christian Morris, published after his death. Uh, uh, it is the sententious piece said by his daughter Elizabeth to be a continuation of Religio Medici. He was a next writer whose name is uh, Edward Hyde or Earl of Clarendon. He, 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 uh, he, he wrote the prose work, uh, The History of the Rebellion and Civil Wars in England. The Life of Edward, Earl of Clarendon. The Life of Edward and Clarendon Autobiography. Edward Hyde's Autobiography, which appeared in 1759. There was another writer, Thomas Hobbes, who was a philosopher. He wrote the greatest work, Leventhan, which, uh, which full title is The Matter, Form, and Power of a Commonwealth, Ecclesiastical and Civil. Uh, Leventhian is a treatise of political philosophy. It is a true book. It expounded his political theories. Uh, it is by the Leventhian. The author signified sovereign power. And ahead, there is a Jeremy Taylor, is one of the prose writer in the age of the era of John Milton. Jeremy Taylor, uh, whose work is The Liberty of Professing, which is an argument for toleration. There is another work, Holy Living, Holy Dying. The rule and exercises of holy living, the rule and exercises of holy dying, any autos, E N I A U T O S. It is series of sermons for the kitchen war. There was another work, the Golden Grove, the manual of daily prayers. There was another work, Doctor Dubitantium. It is a general instrument of moral theology for determining cases of conscience. There is another work, The Worthy Communicant. There was another prose writer in the age of John Milton, Thomas Fuller. Uh, he was actually a chaplain. He was a chaplain to the royalist forces with, uh, during the civil war. His work is the history of the holy war uh, deals with the crusades. There was his another work, The Church History of Britain with the History of the University of Cambridge. Uh, 
uh, which covers from the birth of Christ to the execution of Charles I. After that, another work is the history of the Worthies of England, which is the best known and most characteristic work. Uh, they were another work, the Holy State and the Propane State. But there was the uh, Good Thoughts in Bad Times. It's followed by two sequels. Yes. It is a collection of reflections. It's a pamphlet. Two sequels. Good thoughts in worse times. Mixed contemplation in better times. After that, uh, uh, a Pisgah site of Palestine is a topographical and uh, historical work. Uh, Lamb says, The dear, fine, silly old angel. Uh, we find that Thomas Fuller was uh, admired by Estricol Rich. There was a uh, Fuller was written uh, an alarm to the counties of England and Wales pamphlet. There was another John Denham uh, who, 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 come, uh, who, who created his work, The Soapy. Soapy is a tragedy. It is set in the Turkish court and it is performed in 16. There was another work, Cooper's Hill. It is the most famous poem by Sir John Denham. There was another William Chamberlain who, uh, who wrote Paranida. H A R O W N I D A is a romantic poem. Another one was James Shirley. James Shirley uh, he posed The Lady of Pleasure. Chart Baxter. The work The Saints to a Lasting Rest. So that Jack Walton composed the work The Complete Angler, which is a chief work. Owen Feltham wrote It Is All Divine Vonal Particle, which is a collection of essays. It is Divine Vonal Particle written by Owen Feltham. There is a Bacon's influence on this work. William Drummond, who wrote Cypress Grew. James Howell wrote Epistole Hue, which is a familiar letters. We find in 1644, civil war was started and theaters were closed. So, in this way, John Milton's era. I want to say thanks to you.